It's always Gold FM for us at Golden Point, Raki Raki. Gold FM is number one in Lusaka. Gold FM is Nandi's best radio station. It's always Gold FM with us here in Singatoka. Old is Gold and Gold FM is number one here in Lusaka. Singatoka loves classic hits on Gold FM. You listen to Gold FM here in Tawa. We love Gold FM in Bang. We've got beautiful beaches, people and Gold FM in Raki Raki. Lusaka loves the classic hits on Gold FM. Gold FM, only the classic hits. In the news tonight, two teachers and a student investigated over alleged beat-up in Nandi school. A first for Fiji, Israeli surgeons conduct hearing implant operation. And ministry records decrease in violence against women and children. Good evening, I'm Jackie Spate and this is FBC News. Two teachers and a student are being investigated by police for allegedly assaulting a student from the same high school in Nandi yesterday. The incident is allegedly linked to the consumption of alcohol by teachers and their students within the school premises. Those involved tried to reconcile with the victim in an attempt to keep the matter hidden from the public eye. 17-year-old Aman Kumar with visible injuries last night after what he claims was an attack by his own form teacher at Korovuto College. I shouted, I shouted so many times, but no one came. I tried to run from there, but I fell, and from there I could not remember anything. What has happened to my nephew is shocking, and I am sad about it, and I only hope it does not happen to another student. Police have confirmed receiving the report and are investigating. Two teachers and a student will be questioned over the alleged punch-up with claims that they had been drinking in the teacher's quarters during school hours. I want to know if he was drunk. Why didn't they call the police to find out if he was drunk or not? My nephew told me that they were with the master and he told him that he can drink. The school principal Sanjay Chandra did not want to comment, saying all he knows is that the matter is now with police. The masters has beaten him so badly today, and I want justice that we send our children to school to get educated. But this kind of incidents are happening, it's very sad, and I want to know if students get in trouble and fight in school. The school should inform the police. The is not in a position to comment, but sent one of its officers to the school this afternoon to investigate the assault. Christopher Chand, FBC News. Prominent Israeli surgeons who are currently in the country have carried out a historical surgery. For the first time in the South Pacific, a deaf boy has been given his hearing senses after undergoing a hearing implant operation. Neelam Raj with the story. The surgeons are here upon the request of the Ministry of Health. Out of the 20 operations they have carried out, the specialist doctors conducted an extraordinary surgery using magnetic Sofano implant. Basically we, put, we implant a magnet into the skull behind the ear and that's done surgically. It's, it's, it's not a big procedure, it takes about an hour and the magnet sort of screwed into the side of the skull and then the wound is closed and once the wound is healed the magnet will hold a special bone conducting a hearing aid on the back of the ear. When Dr. Gordon believes Fiji lacks the resources and facilities to conduct these types of special surgeries. There's not enough doctors to treat the problem here. There's not enough facilities. Uh, they don't have enough operating time to deal with it. They need more equipment. Um, I think in every area, uh, you know, we've got a fair bit of work to do to, to improve the um, well-being of the ear, nose and throat patients here. In the coming years, there are plans in carrying out more such surgeries in Fiji. We are, have been sent here by the Israeli government to, to provide aid and um, our mission here has been quite successful. We've treated a lot of patients and I think we've helped a lot of people and we're planning to do the same thing next year, hopefully. The team is also pleased with the level of skills displayed by Fijian doctors and nurses who are assisting them. 
Surgeries in Suva end today. Neelam Raj, FBC News. The Fiji police force has changed its approach in trying to locate missing persons. There is now a red alert tag for such cases after people reported missing earlier this year were found dead. Vosita Kotewasawasa reports. So far this year, the Fiji police force has noticed that most of the reports on missing people were those whose bodies were located days or a month later. We have uh, uh, put uh, red alert cases on all missing persons. Yeah, that means when a person has been reported missing to any police station or any community post, it, they, they, the police need to attend to them immediately. One case that caught national attention was Ella Blakelock and Krishna Swami, who were found inside a car that had been submerged in a creek in Navua for a month. Abhishek Kumar and Samuel Nand were reported missing in Lambasa. Their mutilated bodies were found a few days later in Tambia. Ranil Sharma was also reported missing by his wife in April. His decomposed body was only found this month. Since January this year, 53 people have gone missing and most of them are aged between 11 to 18. Police are concerned that people fail to pass on information that could help them locate the missing person. If they see something strange, okay, or a suspicious figure moving around the neighborhood, and they, that's the first time they see them, or anything suspicious, anything that is uh, not normal, any activity that is not normal going on in the areas of response of uh, living, uh, take up the telephone and call us. Two people are currently missing. 20-year-old Sangita Singh of Vakambalea in Navua was last seen leaving home for the CWM hospital last Monday. Another is 17-year-old Rampur College student, Rina Tiva, who failed to return from school on Monday. Anyone with any information is urged to contact 919 on 917. FBC News. Violence against women has reduced in communities where the Zero Tolerance Violence Free Community Initiative is undertaken. The Permanent Secretary for Women, Dr. Jo Koroi Bueta, says Fiji is banking on this initiative to end violence against women as we go through the 16 days of activism. It's considered a breakthrough in Fiji's efforts to stop violence against women and children. The Zero Tolerance Violence-Free Community Initiative is bearing fruit. The communities where Zero Tolerance uh, Violence-Free has been declared, one thing for sure, the violence against women and children have been reduced, or even to zero reporting for that matter. And Fiji is using this initiative on the international scene to campaign about women and gender-based violence. Fiji is uh, banking on the road of uh, zero tolerance, uh, zero tolerance violence-free communities. And this is a, uh, it's a homegrown uh, product and something that we are quite proud of because it's something within Fiji. And not only that, it is shown to be working. To better address women's issues, government has established and registered 1,200 women's group in Fiji. Government now have a functional network of women's organizations, you know, that uh, now we can have a mechanism, you know, to discuss about, to work on, uh, you know, empowerment of women, to bring realities, you know, to the societies at large. Eh? The 16 days of activism, which calls for an end to violence against women and children, ends on the 10th of December. Epeli Tukwasa, FBC News. Still to come on FBC News, government to put more services online from next year. Today FM is number one here in Singapore. We are today FM in Lambasa. My favorite station in Nandi is Today FM. I love Today FM because they play the awesome, awesome song. A lot of city love Today's kid music. I love Today FM because they play all my songs. We love Today FM at Vunivar Lambasa. Yeah, it rocks. I love Today FM because it rocks. Today's hit music on Today FM. Bulan dua saya betul FM, enam bulan dua rakyat. Bulan FM enam bulan dua inosor. Kau etah buat kau tak kau lepas am bulan FM kan? Bulan FM enam bulan dua korbu. Bulan FM enam bulan dua esawa. Bulan FM enam bulan dua lotok kan? Bulan enam bulan dua enam bulan FM memba. Bulan FM enam bulan dua inosor in Singapore. Kau tali tak ada warung enam bulan FM lotok kan? Ali akar warung enam bulan FM enam bulan dua inosor. Bulan FM enam bulan dua inosor.
Welcome back. This is FBC News. A number of government services will be available online by the middle of next year. This was confirmed by Acting Prime Minister Ayas Said Kayyum at an ICT conference in Suva this morning. Before we proceed the conference, jointly organized by the Fiji National University, the University of the South Pacific and the University of Fiji, is looking at how to enable access to modern technology for all Fijians. The Fijian government seems to be leading the way, outsourcing the government IT services to a company from India. You should be, by middle of next year, be able to do title searches. You should be able to register your companies online. We have one window applications that are about to be completed for your applications for foreign investment certificates. And obviously, you can, should be able to pay online for those services. In the same way, if you're applying for scholarships, if you're getting information, all of that should be on the system. Sayed Kayum says a lot has already changed over the years and people have become empowered. One example is the deregulated mobile telecommunications industry. It's not just our ability to be able to communicate with each other in social chats, but it's also very empowering in terms of the ability of people to be able to access information, which would in fact be very, very costly to access. The vice chancellors from the three universities spoke on the need for wider access to ICT services for average Fijians. ICTs represent the most important tool now in creating uh, knowledge societies, in creating societies that can be competitive. What we want at the end of the day, not only technology availability, but also affordability of that technology. If we don't have connectivity in Viji Levu, let us forget about Manu Levu and the islands. And if there's no connectivity, then whatever we do, whatever policies you have regarding ICT, whatever good you know, policies you have, will not work. ICT and enabling access is seen as a tool for the growth of the entire country. Edwin Nand, FBC News. The travel ban imposed by Australia and New Zealand is starting to ease off, says the Attorney General Aizsaid Kayyum. Said Kayu made the statement while addressing participants of a three-day course for senior officials of Fiji statutory bodies. He says the ban has affected the appointment of people to the board. We have been somewhat restricted in the pool of people that we could choose from because of the travel bans imposed by Australia and New Zealand. So, you know, people obviously were, were worried about the fact they cannot travel anymore or, they, or their spouses or their children or their grandfathers and relatives and everybody else. These are blanket uh, travel bans. But hopefully that's kind of easing off. Said Kayyum says they are now trying to get as many different people with different skills to be board members of these companies. Women from all walks of life have come together for a three-day conference focusing on domestic violence, human trafficking and sexual exploitation of children in Fiji. The conference, hosted by the Assemblies of God Church in cooperation with the Ministry of Women, will look at ways to stop such issues from happening in the country. Apisalamidokar reports. More than a thousand women from all over the country, including representatives from Vanuatu, Solomon Islands and Australia, all with different religious backgrounds, are discussing how they can assist in the fight against the abuse of women and children and human trafficking. We feel this is a, a problem and it's, human trafficking is on our shores and it's increasing over the years. We've uh, received statistics on that. So we feel that women have the potential to bring about change. With the theme, I am my sister's keeper, most of these women have come to learn a lot of what they never knew before. What I have heard during the conference has really challenged me on what I can do or what a religious institution can do to help fight these problems. The women have gathered to have a voice and fight the occurrence of such issues. There would be some who are victims of this to let them know that they can be a voice to those who do not have a voice when it comes to this. Uh, back home in Vanuatu, uh, we are facing it, the women are facing it, but they are silent about it. The three-day workshop ends tomorrow. Apisalom Medoka, FBC News. Sports time now, and here's Jamie with the latest. Good evening. In sports tonight, coach Ben Ryan and the Fiji 7 side ready for their first match at the Dubai 7s and women's football IDC to kick off tomorrow. Details after this break. 
देश की धड़कन रेडियो फिजिक टू इज नंबर वन इन सिंगटोका मैं लंबा सकी निवासी मेरा नाम प्रेम चंद्रा है देश की धड़कन रेडियो फिजी टू को मेरा सलाम मेहंदी में देश की धड़कन रेडियो फिजी टू रेडियो फिजी टू में देश की धड़कन मुझे बहुत अच्छा लगता है रेडियो फिजी टू इज नंबर वन इन सिंगापुर नैंडी में मेरा धड़कन है रेडियो फिजी टू हम ननुपुर के लिए रहता है और हम रेडियो फिजी टू हरदम सुनता है हमें रेडियो फिजी टू सुनो बहुत अच्छा लगे आप भी रेडियो फिजी टू सुनो देश की धड़कन रेडियो फिजी टू Eh tali tak ni radio Fiji One ni nombor ranin nonton punuah. Aduh tali takkan baru orang radio Fiji One ni singa toka boleh tengah stesen ni alamatu. Aduh tali tak boleh guna baru orang radio Fiji One ni stesen ni alamatu elok toka. Aduh tali tak boleh guna baru orang radio Fiji One ni mandi nasi stesen ni alamatu. Aduh tu kalau korbo. Untuk orang mula bina stesen yang lama tua, na radio Fijuan. Untuk orang yang na radio Fijuan, na stesen ini yang lama tua, na bandoi tilip. Na radio Fijuan, na dua ribu tiga puluh enam ni biar nanti. Welcome back to FBC Sports. Fiji Sevens rugby coach Ben Ryan will have his final training run with his side later tonight. Fiji plays the United States in its first match tomorrow night and Ryan says he already has a fair idea of who will start the game. However, he is keeping his cards close to his chest. Yeah, no, these sort of things, you know, coaches need to keep, keep to themselves. Uh, one of the, and I'm not sure how, how many of the English, Canadian or American management might be uh, listening to these sort of interviews, but um, it's important to keep some things up your sleeve and that's what I'll uh, continue to do. But all I can say is, the boys, um, you know, are, are competing well. We've got um, a lot of competition for places, and also, I've got the ability to play players in different positions when required, either through injury or because we want to change the strategy for the game that we're going to play. Young ruggers looking to buy for a spot in the Sevens Youth Olympic Games next year will get their chance in the Aon East versus West Challenge this weekend. The tournament will see an under-16 series for players in the two regions to stake a claim for the world tournament in China. Talent Adakadaka has more. The Aeon East vs West Challenge continues to draw support from rugby stakeholders. With an under-16 challenge to precede the main game, organizers are certain that this bodes well in their preparations for the 2014 Youth Olympics. We have to have a platform to get like the best, eh? because we know the processes might take longer and it might cost more. So I think the best is to like have the players chosen from the various uh, zones. And I think the secondary schools executive have, identi have been identifying students within their zones. The reason for the under-16 grade is because next year's Youth Olympic Sevens competition will be played in the under-18 age category. Rugby officials believe the time is right to get the ball rolling for their medal hunt next year as well as provide a stepping stone to the Rio Olympics in 2016. I think that's the opportunity for the young players. I wouldn't call it a shadow team, uh, but I would call it an opportunity for young players to perform in the Olympics, win a medal, and then put their hands up and bring forth those Olympics. The Aeon East vs West Challenge will kick off this Saturday with the Kachi Rugby Program at 11.30 a.m. followed by the Under-16 Challenge at 1.30 p.m. with the main game to kick off at 4 p.m. Chalendo Dakadak, FBC Sports. The Vodafone Fiji Mbati were today treated to a morning tea by sponsors Vodafone Fiji. The mobile service provider has pledged $4 million to the Fiji National Rugby League for the next three years. The Bati stop over at the Vodafone head office was equally enjoyed by players and staff. Bati captain Peter Rodivoni Deva says Vodafone had been an integral part of rugby league's growth in the country. Over the last few weeks, uh, with a new sponsorship to, to the rugby league, it's a sponsorship that, uh, as, a, as, a, as a game, we're very appreciative, uh, appreciative of. And we can uh, ensure that in the next few years, we're going to see some uh, amazing young players wearing the, the Fiji Bati jersey with uh, Vodafone uh, pride place on that jersey. The Mbati who returned from the Rugby League World Cup on Tuesday break camp tomorrow. The Women's Football Inter-District Championship starts in Ba tomorrow. Selectors will look at players for the Fiji Women's Under-20 side for the Oceania World Cup playoffs in New Zealand in February. While the squad has been decided, coaches will look at new talent the women's IDC sees defending champions Lambasa joining Tavua, Nandrunga, Rewa and Navua in Pool 1. 
Pultu has Mba, Suva, Nandi, Lami and Lautoka. Meanwhile, underdogs Lami say they will be out to make a point. Uh, you got Ba and you got Suva and a uh, few other teams that are, are up there with uh, plenty of uh, reps, you know, and uh, we are concerned about that. But uh, I think uh, with a young team and with a young mind, I think uh, the girls are going to be okay. The first match kicks off at 8 a.m. tomorrow with Lombasa taking on Tavua. A special advisor to the United Nations Secretary General Ban Ki-moon is on a brief visit to the country to promote sports as a tool for development and peace. German national Wilfred Lemke, who is expected to meet government officials as well as witness homegrown sporting programs, took some time out to be present at the Fiji Disabled People's Federation Sports Fund Day in Suva today. Salen Daudakadaka reports. Sports can bring people together and also build bridges. This is the message that this UN envoy hopes to impart during his short stay in the country. And so I'm totally convinced that sport can play a role uh, to bring peace to the people around the world and also to solve uh, in conflict areas. Uh, there is a language that we call sport. Lemke reports directly to UN Secretary General Ban Ki-moon on sporting initiatives he sees around the world that he feels help foster development and peace. He was particularly impressed by the country's attention on grassroots level sports, in particular Cricket Fiji's inclusive cricket program for disabled players. You not only have uh, the view on uh, elite sports, but you also uh, have uh, quite a good grassroots level sports and that is uh, what, interested, what I'm more interested in, to, to, to use sport as a tool bringing uh, together different ethnic groups, different religious groups, to have sports together, to understand each other, and to respect each other and become friends. Lemke is in the region as he will be attending the 2013 Pacific Youth and Sports Conference in New Caledonia next week. Salendo Dakavak, FBC Sports. The inaugural Oceania Regional Anti-Doping Workshop funded by UNESCO was held in Nandi today. Participants from around Oceania took part in the workshop talking about anti-doping and its impact in the region. With doping becoming a concern for sports around the world, hopes are that the workshop will boost the anti-doping knowledge of Oceania. This workshop, is, there's a great need of, to have this workshop. Uh, is that uh, we need to make sure that our countries or the region is actually implementing this um, uh, anti-doping programs in such a way that is relevant to them and addressing the issues that they have in their own countries in regards to drugs in sports. And th this is a really um, important workshop and it, uh, we're very fortunate that the UNESCO was able to provide us with the 50,000 US dollars to be able to actually carry out this uh, workshop and to help our countries to make sure that they're doing a good job in promoting doping-free sport message. And before I go, an update from the FIBA Pacific Championships in New Zealand. The Fiji women's basketball team beat New Caledonia 48-21 this afternoon. The Fiji men will also meet New Caledonia at 6.30 p.m. That is your sports for tonight. Good evening. There is an increase in the level of economic activity in Fiji depicting investor confidence. The construction sector is booming with lots of new buildings, shopping malls and hotels being built at strategic locations together with personal home constructions. ANZ Chief Executive Vishnu Mohan says the tourism sector is also thriving after the flooding last year. So I think all in all you see there is a there is a feeling of positivity about the place. There is a feeling of optimism and obviously with the developments on the government front about the constitution being signed and announcement over the election. So obviously all the dog are well for the future of the country. The NZ Bank in its 2014 Pacific Outlook has upgraded Fiji's growth forecast for this year to 2.8% from the earlier forecast of 2.7%. Well, the time now in Jen, what have you got for us today? Honestly, Jackie, I am tired. Tired of these clouds and showers that I keep seeing on the map. 
Now, I would have loved to give you better news, but unfortunately, we had minimal sunshine today and we'll probably have minimal sunshine tomorrow. After a few days of temperatures all being in the 30s, Savo Savo is finally a little cooler on 29 degrees. It's another story for Suva though, who's the hottest on 33. And yes, I was right. We've got rain throughout the country with afternoon thunderstorms in Nandi, Lautoka and Ba. Mombasa seems to be the lucky one this week. They only have a few cloudy periods to deal with. For mariners, keep in mind that north to northeast winds are at 10 to 15 knots. There'll also be moderate seas and poor visibility in areas of heavy showers and thunderstorms. And I'm done with weather. You enjoy this stunning picture of the lovely Coral Island. And catch me again tomorrow evening. Same time, same place. Thanks so much for that, Genevieve. A recap of our main stories. Two teachers and a student investigated over alleged beat-up in Nandi school. A first for Fiji, Israeli surgeons conduct hearing implant operation, and ministry records decrease in violence against women and children. A poll question we're asking, what did you think of the Vodafone Fiji Mbati performance at the 2013 Rugby League World Cup? Visit the FBC website to take part. Remember, you can send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizenseyes at fbc.com.fj or share it with us via Facebook page FBC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your stories at FBC News or simply hashtag FBC News. And don't forget, you can catch Fiji's first ever TV fashion show, Chechemon, tonight at 7, only on FBC TV. That's all from us today. Until tomorrow, ni the manta.